Hello and welcome to lecture number 38, The Nucleus. We're continuing our discussion of the nucleus, part five, okay? Uh, radioactive decay, we're gonna talk about half-life today. And we've already discussed alpha and beta decay. Remember in alpha and beta decay, the element changes because the number of protons changes, okay? And so what we want to talk about here is we're going to talk about a radioactive element. I'll call it A. And when it undergoes alpha or beta decay, it's going to change into element B. So if I have a pound of A in a certain time, half of this sample is going to be A and half is going to be B. The time it takes for sample A to decay in half, so half is A and half is B, is called the half-life. Okay, so the half-life is the time it takes a radioactive element to decay in half. All right, so let's look. We're starting off with all A. T one half is what I'm calling the half-life. T sub one half, doesn't matter. Okay, after one half-life, our sample, one pound, 10 kilos, half a microgram, doesn't matter. Our sample, all A, after one half-life is half of A and half of B, okay? Now, if we undergo another half-life, A decays in half. So a half of a half is one-fourth. So now, one-fourth of the sample is A, three-fourths is B. It has been converted to element B. After another half-life, the one-fourth A decays in half. So a half of a fourth is one-eighth of the sample now is A. Three, seven-eighths is B. And we continue on. Take half of an eighth, you get one sixteenth. So now you have one sixteenth of our sample is A. Fifteen sixteenths is B. And let's go on. Half of a sixteenth is a thirty-second. One thirty-second of the sample is A. Thirty-one thirty-seconds is B. After another half-life, half of one thirty-two is one sixty-fourth is A. Sixty-three sixty-fourths will be B. We'll keep going. Half of one of uh, 64 is 128 of the sample is A. 127 over 127 of the sample is B. So the amount of A is decreasing, right? Exponentially, having and having. After one, I did one more. After one more half life, half of 128 is 256. So one 256 of the sample is A. 255 over 256 of the sample is B, and we can keep going. So what we're doing is radio radioactive sample keeps decaying a half times a half times a half times a half, n times, n is the number of decays, so 1 over 2 to the n, okay? So let's look at some problems. And I did, for now, in the next lecture we'll do others, for now I did all of the same type of problems. OK, because I want you to get the idea how to do these types of problems. So let's look at the first one. In one day, only one sixteenth of a radioactive sample remains. What is the half life of this sample? So one sixteenth remains one sixteenth. OK. One sixteenth. If there's one sixteenth decays, how many times did it decay? Well, one sixteenth is one half times one half times one half times one half. So there's four decays in one day. Four decay, how long is a day? Well, a day is 24 hours. So if there's four decays in 24 hours, one decay is 24 divided by four. So the answer to the first problem is six hours, six hours. Okay. Second problem, same exact problem, except instead of one sixteenth remaining, we have one sixty-fourth remaining. Okay, one sixty-fourth is a half times 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 a half. If you do that six times, six decays, a half times 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 a six decays, a half times a half is one sixty-fourth. So our sample decayed six times in one day, six decays in 24 hours, 24 divided by six, the half-life is four hours. Okay, next one. In two days, only one over 256 remains. 
one over two. So the sample has to remain has has to decay how many times? Okay, half times a half times a half times a half times a half <gasps> times a half times a half times a half. Eight decays. If you do one half times one half times one half eight times, you get one over 256. So that means there's eight decays in two days. But two days is 48 hours. Eight decays in 48 hours. One decay divided by eight is six hours. Eight into 48. So eight pairs of shoes cost $48. One pair of shoe costs $6. Same idea. Okay. One more problem, same type of problem, okay? In 200 days, only 1 32nd of a sample remains. What's the half-life? 200 days, 1 32nd. So 1 32nd, how many times it decay? A half times a half times a half times a half times a half. Five decays is 1 32nd. So you have five decays in 200 days. Five boxes of candy cost $200. How much does one box of candy cost? Divide by five, five into 200. So the answer to this one is 40 days. The half-life is 40 days. Everybody see how we did that? 40 days, okay? Good. Suppose now I tell you the half-life, okay? Suppose I tell you that the half life, the half life of element X is uh, four days. Okay. How much? of a 21 gram sample remains after 28 days. Okay, well, 28 days each half-life is four days. So 28 days is seven half-lives, right? Seven half-lives, right? Every half-life is four days. In 28 days, it underwent seven half-lives. So that means it decayed in half. A half times a half times a half. Three, four, five, six, seven. Let me make sure I did this right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a half time, how many, how many times is that? I don't know. That's one over two to the seventh. Okay, one over two to the seventh is equal to one over 128. Okay. So how much of a 21 gram sample remains is one over 128 times 21 grams. So what remains of X is one 128 times 21 grams, okay? And you can work that out, 21 divided by 128, okay? 21 into there is about one-sixth, right? And you could figure out one-sixth is about 0.16 decimal point, but you work it out, okay? So the half-life is four days. How much of a 21 gram sample remains after 28 days? 28 days represents seven half-lives. If it undergoes seven decays, that means it's a half times a half times a half, seven times. One over two to the seventh is 128. So after 28 days, one over 128, one over one over one over 128 of the original sample remains of the 21 grams. 
And so that's our answer, right? So this is a second type of problem. In the next lecture, we'll do more of both types of problems. And then I'll also talk about uh, uh, the periodic table and decays of alpha, beta, and gamma, okay? So we'll do that, all problems in the next lecture. Okay, be well.